So let's talk fuel injectors. As you can see in the back row here, we have the eight fuel injectors that came off of our project, IROC Daily. We have one odd fuel injector, the black bodied one, and then seven silver bodied ones. So somebody did a replacement of just a single fuel injector and that's a bad idea. You wanna replace all eight injectors at the same time. So you know they're a balance system and they're from the same batch and they are flowing correctly. So one of the problems with doing just a single fuel injector is that it wouldn't be a match set. So uh, in this case, we have this single replacement fuel injector. We looked at the part numbers and this one is from a 350, a 5.7 liter TPI engine. And it's a 24 pound injector. This silver bodied injector is a 19 pound fuel injector for a 305. So you got the 350 and the 305. So with the TPI, it's a batch fire fuel system. So every time that the computer sends a signal to fire the fuel injectors, all eight injectors fire into the cylinder at the same time. They're not going cylinder by cylinder. So with the batch fire, this fuel injector here is gonna be putting more fuel into the into the combustion chamber than the other seven. So that's gonna cause a little problem with your emissions testing. So, so we're replacing all eight injectors at the same time with these new Bosch fuel injector. So for the purpose of this car, we don't have any mods in the car. We don't have a performance chip in the car. We don't have a different thermostat and we don't have any other mods to, like the airfoil or anything like that in the TPI. So we're replacing just the 305 fuel injectors with a new set of 19 pound 305 fuel injectors. So you can see that these fuel injectors, these smaller Bosch fuel injectors are a smaller body than the original fuel injectors. They are the same height fuel injector and the O-rings are the same size. So these are gonna be a direct replacement. They just look different. So they've got the same connector and everything. So in order to install a fuel injector correctly, you have to get these little clips that turn and lock the fuel injector into the fuel rail. So we'll go ahead and install all these little clips in the, uh, on the fuel injectors and get to the next step. With the fuel rail assembly turned over, we've taken a small paper towel, shop towel, with some silicone spray on it, and done a light coating of silicone spray to each one of the fuel injector bores. And we've also added a light coating of silicone spray to each one of the O-rings on the fuel injectors. So this is the last time that's a good time to take some compressed air and blow out each one of the ports just to get as much debris out of there as possible on both sides. The, any th debris that's inside the fuel injection rail at this point is going to go directly into your fuel injector and possibly clog it up. So. I'm going to go ahead and take this last effort to blow it out. So we've done that and these clips are all installed on these fuel injectors. These are the locks. So you can see one direction for the four on that side and then this locking tab is the other direction on those four. When we install them on the fuel rail assembly, that locking tab is going to be pushed from this side over to that side, and it's going to be facing the direction, the back of the fuel rail. And the GM manual has it pointing that direction, so that's the way we're going to do all of them. So here, that tab is going to push around and lock, going that direction, the locking tab, and the other side will go the other direction and lock towards the back of the fuel rail. So that's Just how so we're you see that. a little closer detail of what we're doing is to install this lock. You see the long locking tab and the short one. The short one goes on the inside of the fuel rail and the long locking tab goes on the outside of the fuel rail so it's accessible when the engine's assembled or when the fuel injection is assembled. 
So you can see that the short locking tab goes on the inside and we did do that light coating of the silicone lubricant on the o-ring and also on the bore so just sliding this in goes right in and then this locking tab right there you can see just with my fingertips it's uh it's binding up just a tiny bit you can wiggle the fuel injector back and forth but with a little bit of pressure on that Without digging in with a screwdriver, you can see that I'm able to push that locking tab around and the other one with my thumbnail on the bottom side. So you can see that that actually spun all the way around. And now the fuel injector is locked in there and there's the locking tab right there. And that's how you would get that off is just to get like an O-ring pick or something and pull that, that direction. So we're gonna finish installing all the injectors this way and then we'll go to the next step. The two fuel lines, the feed, and the return. Both have O-rings on them. So this one has an O-ring seal, and this one has an O-ring seal. And the kit for those is a Napa Auto Parts 2-18416. So there are two O-rings in there. Those are the two O-rings to replace those two O-rings. And since we had it assembled and then had it apart, we're just gonna go ahead and replace these O-rings because if you can see, even just installing it once, it uh, definitely, the seal inside of the, the fuel line definitely chunks at it. So definitely put a little edge on that. So we're gonna replace both of these O-rings, even though they are not old at this point because they've been replaced recently. But I'm not gonna take a chance. So both of these have wear just from one installation about uh, four weeks prior to this video. So we'll replace these and install these two. When installing O-rings, lubricate the O-ring with a little bit of silicone lubricant before you install them. That way it uh, helps for the seating and uh, movement of the o-ring without tearing or damaging them do the same thing for the o-rings when you're installing the fuel injectors <laughs> 